Hey, good morning, guys. Welcome back to the Ride Shop. I'm Captain Lee, and today we're talking about batching out multiple rods. So stick around. Last two days, Nathan and I have been working on batching out a bunch of rods. Um, we have eight spinning rods going right now. Part of that is, you know, we lost two weeks really of time in here due to hurricanes. Part of it is November 1st is coming very quickly. Um, yeah, we got five days and we have been selected as small business of the month at our local bank branch, uh, South State Bank in Auburndale, Florida. So we're trying to get some of our stock rods. Uh, we build rods um, all year round, mostly custom orders, but we also build some stock rods and they are medium, medium heavy, seven footers, spinning and casting, nothing super fancy just if somebody calls and hey you've got I, i'm looking for a rod i'd like it you know next week for a present for somebody we have some in stock normally um, we don't have any at the moment so we're trying to get some stock rods so we can actually put them on display in the bank now what you're about to see is two days worth of bad camera work on my part um, we had been shooting previously on the boat after the hurricane um, on the lake and I forgot to change the setting on this camera um, totally on me this camera worked fine um, so you you lost some of the front view but there is a lot of really good information about how to build multiple rods at one time keep everything straight keep your workflow going and if you're going to take your rod building to a rod building business level and you plan on building, I don't know, we're building over 200 rods a year right now, which that's, that sounds like a lot, but it's only five a week. And that's, that's really doable if you follow the steps that we use. And there's probably better ways to do it, but I know what we do works. What I thought I would do is I'm going to let that footage run. It's a little over an hour. I was in here this morning. It's 3.04 a.m. Sunday morning. Um, and I'm, I was trying to get a video ready for you guys today, and I realized that we had some bad footage, but I don't want to throw it away. It's really valuable information, so let me catch you up to what you're missing when you first go into the video. And that, that first part of the video, I shot Friday morning, I was in here getting prepped, and then Nathan and I worked Saturday morning in here to get us to this point, and then today we're going to the next level, we'll get about six rods wrapped today and then epoxy on them on the ones that honestly are right here and don't even have real seats on them yet but that that's happening in today's video and then i've got one two three four five over there that need finish epoxy that i'll get to later this afternoon because monday tuesday i'm working and then by friday morning this all goes in the bank as in a display so anyway um, what we're working with, we're building six identical, uh, medium, seven foot, fast action spinning rods. And what we started with was the, uh, the MHX 843s, uh, forecast grips in white and black. Uh, and these really cool reel seats that I found at Voodoo. Well, you have to assemble them, but they are the uh, American Tackle um, Comfort, Aero Comfort uh, CCTs that have been painted. Um, they come ULH, so you have to order this rear trim ring, the hood, and then the front barrel. Um, I show you how to put them together. Uh, we're using uh, an FC2 uh, butt cap, and all of this stuff bagged up in Ziploc bags is part of the video, and it's what I'm showing you just how to batch everything out. Um, the recipe again: 843, uh, medium, seven foot, fast action, uh, carbon fiber grips, and then. The American Tackle Comfort Seat Arrow, and then we're using, hang on, I'll show you what we're using. The Microwave Guides in Chrome, 
uh, silver also with a microwave air tip and then in here I've got ALX hook keeper also in chrome silver uh, put them all in this bag put that bag in this bag everything stays together if you get them built anyway I think there's a lot of valuable information on this footage I didn't want to throw it away you guys the 500 or so of you guys who watch everything we put out I think this is going to be valuable to you if you were looking for an entertaining video for this eight minutes long this is not that video this is over an hour there's a lot of detail um, and I hope you enjoy it. You know, this is a working ride shop. This is not a YouTube studio, but I do like to share as much as I can with you guys without it interfering with the operation of the ride shop itself. Priority is get these rides out to clients. Second priority is get this information out to you, even though, you know, you guys are very important to me. But anyway, appreciate you getting to this point. If you're interested in taking your rod building to the next level and really batching out quantity and quality at the same time enjoy this next hour 250 or the 3.625 250 carbon rear grip with a fc2 butt cap also i've ordered uh, the microwave air and the silver and then microwave air tip tops also in silver so these will be colored rods with all the same components on them with different accents, accent colors, threads, marbling, that kind of thing. Now, how I keep myself organized somewhat when I'm batching is Ziploc bags are your friend. For real. So I use these sandwich size bags and I'm going to part out all of my components here into each individual. Well, figure out how to open them. Okay, so I've got butt cap rear grip or butt cap butt grip rear grip real seat with all the components not yet glued up but with all the components on it I'll glue those up in a batch as well I'll glue all those at the same time that's all of the hard components um, I'll do the guides are also in a ziploc bag i'm going to open those and i'm going to put a tip top in each one of the guide sets so all of the guides are together so now we have all the guides i'll need a hook keeper have plenty of ALX style silver chrome hook keepers in here which I just use a 3600 size uh, tackle box to keep all this stuff separate or at least attempt to that's one I got some back stock in here I'll have to pull from two two three four five six so I'll put the hook keeper in with the guides they'll all get wrapped at the same time Then I will pull an included information label, the factory label. I won't use it. Most likely I'll use the information on it to make my own label. That's the labels and the stickers. That's the cool MHX glass cleaner. I'll keep those for myself. Pull that staple. Can't see it. I can feel it, but I can't see it.
I'm going to cut the tag off of it. That is for the warranty information. I'm also going to put that in the small ziplock. All of this goes in the big ziplock. Now, sometimes I will even pick a thread color at this point and put that thread color out of my thread inventory in here so I don't forget. I haven't made those decisions yet, but then what I'll do is I'll pull it out of the shipping bag. I'm going to pull the tip top cover off and I'm just going to poke it through the Ziploc bag put this tip protector back on it and put it in line that's one of six now everything is right there all together all the components I've got to do that five more times and then I will be ready to actually start the building process. That is how you batch out. That is part one of how you batch out rods. Um, in the next video about batching rods, you'll see me um, glue up the handles, um, pre-glue the reel seats and the other steps I do to batch it. And the other steps that I do to really speed time, increase your workflow so you can churn out rods faster, almost assembly line style, but you do it with one person or two. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time. That's where I want to be. My head's not shining too bad. <laughs> Let's change the color. Oh, spit shine. There we go. Mr. Hey, good morning guys. I'm... Hey, good morning guys. Welcome back to the Rod Shop. I'm Captain Lee. That's Nathan. And today we're going to start a multi-rod build, spinning rod build. And we're going to show you how to do it pretty quickly. And we're going to be using some blingy reel seats. So y'all stick around. Okay. Shots. Okay. What we're doing today is <clears throat> what we're doing today is we are batching out um, six medium heavy fast seven foot spinning rods. Oh, are they medium heavy? They're medium. They're mediums. Hey, what we're doing today is we are batching out six medium fast spinning rods are the uh, the 843 from mud hole the elites um, I have already started batching some of these uh, I started yesterday but I thought we would take you through the whole build process and we could do it pretty quickly uh, and I think we're gonna do it in two videos possibly three but if they're gonna be a lot of information in the videos so you're gonna wanna catch all three of them. Now, here's the recipe. So we are using, oh, an L843MHX in white. I have two in white. I have one in blue, one in teal, and two in purple. Um, some of them are already on the uh, dryer where we're using these forecast carbon fiber grips, but I bought them in the white. These are the 250 rears. And what I've done is I tinted, and you'll see these later on in the build where I, I've gone with colored epoxy mm -hmm. and just tinted the white a little bit, either in a contrast color or to match the blank, the accent colors on the blank. And the two that are spinning there, we did them in silver. That's really cool because with the refraction of the light through the epoxy it looks like you can see through the grip and you see the blank it's really cool hopefully we get a picture that shows that um, so that's the rear grip i'm sorry yes that's the rear grip butt grip we are using the uh i think it's the 350 uh, carbon fiber same thing colored carbon fibers to white and black we're using the arrow painted 
real seat with a trim ring which we'll have to trim that we'll have to scrape some of this paint off because it got too thick which is what happens with parts when you paint them the white hood and then the silver front trim and what we're going to do first is we're going to glue this up so it looks like one of these that i glued up yesterday um, it's a really cool look in my opinion and my opinion is the only one that counts to me so these are hand painted by i bought i picked them up at voodoo i'll figure out which one of these orders they came on i had two orders come in american tackle shiroi spinning reel seats in the white they were 10 bucks painted hey bow but you still that that's the ulh that is just this part <clears throat> and this part then you have to get the foregrip hood which is this piece that's six dollars the trim ring the bottom trim ring which is this piece is a dollar 89 and the aluminum sleeve which is this piece is 229 so you're still looking at under 20 bucks for a really kind of blingy real seat <clears throat> which i think is cool then we're going to use microwave air um, in the chrome finish and a microwave air tip top which is i, I have put in the bag i kind of sorted all these out i um this is the original mhx label which we won't use it but we need the information off of it <clears throat> and then what i do is i took all of my parts i put them in a ziploc baggie and i just punched them through with a uh, rod tip carefully um so you don't break the rod and we'll get into that in a minute how not to break a rod might be a little bit of a sore subject yeah so anyway I, I bashed them out i put everything together i had them standing here and i started breaking them apart and putting them all the smaller pieces together so what we're going to do now first things first is we're going to pre-glue up this real seat so it's ready to go then we'll spline the blank quickly ream the grips and glue the grips up today and then tomorrow, after I get epoxy on the grips, which you will see us epoxy grips today, uh, we'll do that before we leave today, and that'll be the last thing in this video. And then tomorrow, we'll be able to put the real seat on, wrap it, <clears throat> and, and be ready to start finishing it. So these are the parts I'm going to need. Oh, and that's an, that's an FC2 uh, butt cap that'll fit perfectly. A little bit of force. It's a little snug. You gotta be careful. You don't only want you only put it on there one time because it uh, they will snap that foam off if you're not careful. So the other thing that we were going to do today, <clears throat> where's my embarrassment? This is a really cool design that I did yesterday. Um, I used four different colors. Of epoxy plus a clear on this Alps uh, real seat. It's assembly. This this one is. This is something new I was playing with. I was going to talk to you about that too. It's the Alps RSTX 16 Ready Set Grip Kit, and what it comes assembled already. It the the sleeve is already epoxyed in. The rear grip is epoxied. The foregrip is already put together and it's all got a foam core. So you just ream once and glue it all up at one time. Saves a little bit of time. Saves a lot of time. So I, I knocked that out. I put the same uh, for, forecast carbon fiber grips except I got them in black. I did this cool marbling and today we were going to wrap it and start finishing this rod except um, I grabbed it if it, it fell 
this morning while I was obviously cleaning up the rod shop. We got a lot of stuff going on. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's a really sad day in the rod shop because it's broke. So, what we're going to do in a future video, probably next week, because I was really looking forward, this is a drop shot rod, is I ordered ferrules. And we're going to turn this in, maybe, to a two-piece drop shot rod. Anyway, that's coming, <clears throat> I hope. Because I don't, this is just way too cool to throw away. And Nathan can tell you, I sat here with a very sad look on my face for about 30 minutes trying to figure out what I was going to do. And that's what I finally came up with, because I am not pitching that. So anyway, let's get busy today. All right, Nathan, we need... We need some epoxy. Yep. We need... Cut us, cut us an ear off of one of those boxes that are out there. I just I pitched a bunch of cardboard out of here not too long ago. So the first thing we're going to do is get this prepped for epoxy. There's not a whole lot of prep that you really need to do. Um, short of getting ready to clean stuff up. And paper towels. There we go. <clears throat> because there we go. perfect. Uh, there's not a lot of prep. <clears throat> there's not a lot of prep that you really have to do other than because it's a painted surface. You guys know when you put precision parts together unpainted, they fit perfectly. If you paint them, they don't fit anymore. Like you, we could probably force this ring on, but that's not a good idea. So how I figured out to do this was I'm going to take my X-Acto and I'm going to use the heel of it down here where it's nice and strong. And I'm just going to scrub all the, this foregrip, ULH foregrip, has this, these bars in it. And the only thing we really need to do is scrape the paint off of the tops of those bars. should slide on here. Ta-da! Ta-da! And then we'll glue these pieces together. And um, bam. Perfect, right? Yep. Piece of cake. So, let me clean up my mess here. There's a little piece of cardboard. Ow! I cut my thumb <laughs> yesterday and I just poured it full of alcohol. Uh -huh, I found it for you, did Yeah, it? I did. That was not good. Alright, so I'm going to slide this back a little bit. You don't really need to take it all the way back off. You just need room to get some epoxy in there. 
And I need my little spatula too. And we're going to mix up just a little bit of the Pro, Pro Glue 5 minute epoxy. Now, for the people, could we do masking tape around this edge? Don't need it. Don't need it. I mean, if you're going to be crazy with gluing, yeah, you could. Okay. But I'm not going to put a lot of glue in there. It's not, it doesn't really need, honestly, you could probably get away without gluing that at all. Because it won't slip off once the, once the other parts are glued on behind it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want it to rattle, potentially. So we'll just do a quick mix on them. Boom, boom, boom. Now all I'm going to do is just put a little bit on these ridges and it's going to wind up being too much and then I'm going to wipe it back off. But that's how you know when you, when you filled it up with glue. When you got enough is when it's too much. I'm just going to slide it up and it's going to push out just a little bit. take my little square and I'm going to get it off dry and then once I get everything glued up we'll go back and we'll wipe it down a little better all right the next thing these are fairly rough surfaces on the aluminum and definitely on the inside of this carbon fiber hood so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to coat this ULH hood pretty heavy in between the ridges I'm going to set it upside for a minute and we're going to coat the inside of the sleeve where the out the one outer band will make contact so what I've just done is I have by doing these two I've put glue on the both sides of this piece and if you do it this way you don't have a lot of squeeze out that you have to clean up Okay, so now we'll slide that in. And see that squeeze out is there mm -hmm. where this is going to be glued up anyway. And there's really not much to clean up. No. And it's got a ton of epoxy in it. And I'm going to wipe it down anyway just in case I got fingerprints on it, but they do have sticky. Don't put it on my thumb. <laughs> Don't pour it in the wound, Lee. I'm just going to do a quick clean just to make sure. Wipe it down with alcohol. Don't want to put too much on that paint. I don't know how it's going to react to paint, so I don't want to be crazy with the alcohol. And then let me just do a dry wipe. And the only thing you got to watch out for is the glue you where you may have over glued and it runs out of the threads and you could possibly get some glue on the inside of the threads so the way to stop that from happening is to just take your finger with a paper towel and wipe it inside let's see I've got glue on that finger already so now there is a little bit of a bead of glue on the outside, but it's not going to run and pull because we're going to sit it like this and let it set. Right. It's gravity's holding all the parts where they need to be. So that's gluing up the hood. Next thing we need to do after we clean up our mess. Ah, 
this alcohol. He found the cut again. I found that cut again. I am just not smart. Okay, we will set that aside for the moment. We're going to set this aside for the moment. And we're going to pull one of these that I glued yesterday and we're going to pretend it's that one. All right. Now we need a ream. Actually, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to throw some masking tape on it. And I've still got glue on my fingers. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to put some masking tape and we're going to do a splining real quick. So I like to go way ahead of the real seat. Tip in the carpet, and I'm gonna put a pretty, pretty good load on it. And saw it snap right there. Now this is, I, I don't know what you actually call it. There is a lot of debate of what is the spine. I'm gonna call it the natural bending axis of the rod. This is the way the rod wants to be bent. Now, some people say, well, you should put guides opposite of that, but all that does is anytime you load that rod, it's going to want to do that. Twist in your hand. Yep. And it went, there's two. And they're close together. They are very close together. Nathan had a rod last week where it had about five. Uh, that's that's the main that's one. the dominant one right there. So this is where This is the side of the blank that we're gonna put the guides on Tip will be you know Turn it over. This is how you're gonna fish it. Yep. That's how we do this now Let's start with laying out Of the handle assembly now I'll save those for later. Tape measure. I'm going to set this trigger at about what really is not the trigger, but it's more of the center. the stem, I guess. I'll set it at about 12 inches. And what I know is that from doing the other five is that I'm going to put a mark here seven inches up from the bottom. Because that's how it lays out. I did the other five that way yesterday. But all you're going to do is we're just going to put a piece of masking tape at the seven inch mark. So we know where we want to stop the bottom of the rear grip. And we start reaming. Now, oop, one other thing. You gotta get this label off. And I don't know what kind of glue they use to put these labels on, but it's good stuff. You can't peel it off in one piece. I tried very carefully on a couple of them and just finally gave up. Can't soak them with alcohol because they don't peel that way either. They don't come off. And you see how all of that glue residue is still on the blank. So the easiest way I have found to get that off and this is not product placement, but anybody from Gugon, if you're watching and you want to cut us a check, we'll take it. This is the best stuff ever. Um, all you got to do is kind of soak it. And then wipe it off. And just like that, it is squeaky clean. It is squeaky clean. However, nothing will stick to it. So there's now goo gone residue on a blank and we're gonna wanna glue. So now we go with alcohol to get rid of the goo gone. I wonder how stuff gets broken in this rod shop. <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. I don't know.
Okay. Now, it's time to ream. So, we are going to cheat because we have power reamers. But the process is exactly the same. You got our reamer set is four. These are the extreme reamers. You can get them a bunch of different places. I think I bought these at Mudhole. But you got a small, medium, large, and extra large. And we don't really use the extra large very much. You can tell it's not a lot of wear on it. But this one is primarily the one that gets used. We're actually going to wind up using these two today. So, first thing you want to do is ream the butt grip. So, I need some power. Powered by DeWalt. Powered by DeWalt. So, first thing that we're going to do, I don't know if you can oh. see this or not, but I am going to power ream down here in this box, our trash box to keep the dust down. Um, you, you, you ream slow, you turn a quarter. You ream a little more, you turn a quarter, you ream a little more, you keep turning it, and the theory is that it keeps it mostly round. It's, it's hard to stay in the center with these, with these grips because it's so easy to ream. So that was, we're not going to check it because oh. I don't want to get a bunch of dust everywhere with the, the, uh, those turning over there. Um, I know that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to need this one on the rear grip. So I'm going to go ahead and ream it while I have that reamer in. Oops, I'm going to need all three of them. That rear grip, existing OD, is smaller than the medium reamer, so I had to switch to the small reamer. So we'll ream that. Go back to the medium. the favorite okay that was the medium now we're going to the large and from reaming the other five yesterday I know about where I need to go normally you'd be checking for fit but I know about where this needs to be so I'm gonna get close mm -hmm. before we check it the first time Pretty good, eh? All right. He's and done this a time or two. A couple times, and then this one, not quite as far. Ow! Check that one for fit. I like it. Ta-da! Ta-da! So that's reaming. Now, if you got a hand reamer, it took it would have taken you with these grips about 10 minutes. And that's just with a lot of checking and fit kept fitting and checking. Um it really the power grip, the power reaming is the way to go. But these grips are so easy to ream with a soft uh, polyurethane foam. It's it's very good at transmitting vibrations but it's also very easy to work with so i put it we're, we're gonna i put it in this stand i made this stand from leftover parts and some extra roller stands what it does is it makes it a lot easier to control your blank when you're building or repairing a guide or it's repairing wonderful. anything it's great so it's just a little sloppy and went a little over not really even a 
a thickness of tape. This one fit perfect. So I'll throw a little bit of a tape arbor in here. And I like it. Okay, uh, next step is we'll glue these up. Um, that's a little wobbly on the end. It's tight on the front. My uh, my reamer has more taper than this blank does. So I'm going to throw some tape right here just to tighten that butt up. for some more epoxy so we're gonna go this time with a 15 minute u40 pro paste u40 good? quick bond 10 minute okay 10 minute rod bond so a couple popsicle sticks and if you are not used to that 10 minutes they are dead on the money yeah you better be ready <laughs> that's all I gotta say is you better be ready so we're gonna mix up you don't need much because these we're just doing the grips so we're going to mix up not that much. Still got blinky lights. Yep. Yep. Ever since you replaced the cameras, we don't have... <laughs> don't say it. <laughs> don't even think it. Well, oh, it's a little too late. Yeah, well, he's if, talking... If these are long time I, sp I spent another $1,000 in this ride shop buying two new cameras a month or so ago for this channel and for the fishing channel and the Swamp Cat channel and it's made a world of difference with how easy it is to video. No more... Not as many issues. We've had a few, but... You know, when... We, when I build this, I mean, we're going to be building this rod for about 45 minutes today. It's going to take me two hours to uh, edit. Then I got to process it. And then I got to get it uploaded on YouTube. And then tomorrow, which is Sunday morning, you should be watching this video. But. That's why when we're get crazy busy in a ride shop, usually I don't do a lot of videos because it just takes up too much time. I just spun that up. There's a spinning seat, so it doesn't really matter. We're not setting up real seat yet, so we don't have to worry about where the spine is. And I'm just wiping the excess off. I'm not going to put the butt cap on it yet because I will balance this rod. Plus I'm going to do epoxy on these grips. And it's a lot easier to do that without a butt cap on it. Because you don't have to worry about not getting epoxy on a butt cap because the butt cap's not there. And then you just put the butt cap on last. Spin it up close. And I'm gonna wipe most of this excess epoxy off. And I'm moving the paper towel as I turn. So I'm picking up all that excess ex excess epoxy on a clean part of the paper towel so I'm not smearing it. And I'll finish turning it up to where it needs to be. Do one more wipe. That's pretty snug. I'm going to peel my marker tape off.
Then I'm going to take one of these little squares and I'm going to put it on a carpet down here. Except that I want to in front of it. What's that? I set the front right here. Doesn't matter because that's under the real seat. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right. I mean, it's good that you caught it, but it doesn't really matter. What he's talking about is this excess up here, but I'm leaving that because now I've got a reference point of where this thing should be in case it slides. Okay. So now I'm just going to carefully stand it on that little square so that we don't epoxy it to the carpet. It'll be stuck to the paper towel in a couple hours when we get packed to it, but it won't matter. <clears throat> okay. This one magically is the one we just glued up. Ta-da! Ta-da! So what we're going to do today is we're going to glue up. We're going to at least get the real seat ready to glue up. And we'll put it back in. Get rid of this epoxy before it gets all over everything. Now it's time to build yourself your arbors for your real seat. You really don't need one in the back because it's going to mount up on your rear grip. You're going to need one in the front. And we're going to mark where the edge of that is. Come back in about a quarter of an inch. And we're going to build an arbor. A pretty significant one, actually. Mm -hmm. Right here. Let me know when you're ready. All right, turn. This is a power wrapper, it's Nathan. All right, this should be close. Go a little bit more. All right. That's a little too tight. Got it a little thick. We'll back some off here. Now I put an intermediate arbor in, it's not necessary, I just do it to keep the epoxy where I want the epoxy. Right, so that's perfectly snug there. And build one here in the middle. So when we put this epoxy on this, this gap here, it kind of scrapes the epoxy and keeps it in this gap so you get a solid contact between your real seat. That's good. And the blank. Yep, that's gonna be perfect. So now we've arbored up. Yeah, I forgot to pull my tape yesterday. Let's see how much of it I epoxied in. Oh, just a little bit. So here's why I pulled that tape a little while ago. I forgot to pull it on this one. I was doing all five of them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to carefully just score the top of this where that tape is stuck. I'm going to try to peel it off without peeling the paint finish off. Just like that. That doesn't usually come off that easy. So, if next step in this is we're going to do, uh, we're going to color just the grips to put, these. this rod's actually going to be pink. Mm -hmm. This is the breast cancer awareness rod that we're starting. Um, so I'm going to use colored epoxy with some or epoxy with some marbling pigment in a bright pink I bought three colors of pink trying to match up some other stuff I've got for this blank this particular one and when we come back we'll be flipped around and be ready to do some epoxy so you guys don't go away Alright, so I'm going to match up. Here, do one 
smallest ones. Yeah. They stick to boxes. They're supposed to stick. But what I want to do is match it. This is the smallest box of them I could buy. It's like 500 of them in there for, I don't know, six bucks. Hey, bad. All right, get every pink that we have out of the drawer there. I think that's going to be the closest one. What's that? <clears throat> Alright, so I think I've got the right color pink to make it work. Close enough. Because I'm going to epoxy over it anyway. Do we have a sparkle that looks like that? Yeah. Recording, recording. Okay. All right, we're back. We're flipped around, and we've been digging up some stuff. I bought a bunch of these uh, breast cancer awareness stick-on little foam ribbons off of Amazon. Uh, like 500 of them for six bucks, because that's the smallest amount I could buy. The box, a bunch of different sizes, but this is the smallest one. I um, mean, it's going to be placed ahead of the real seat here, somewhere like this. 
So what we're trying to do is match colors. I also bought this Justice. Um, it's a huge flake, but and you can either mix it in your clear epoxy or you can put your clear epoxy on it and sprinkle on top of it in a pattern. Um, we went through our entire collection of pinks and purples to try to find a matching uh, pigment. We found one, I don't know what the name of it is because this is the one I bought from a CRB kit years ago. And it appears, let's see if it's got a number on it. It's PMRB-PK, so I guess it's pink. So I don't know anything other than pink. But it's close enough that by the time we put sparkle in it, and I'm actually going to wind up epoxying over it, and I'll have a little bit of this pigment in it, so it'll change the color a little bit, but I don't think that'll matter. Um, but today we want to go ahead and put epoxy on the grips. Now this is the one that I glued up yesterday, although the one we just glued up is probably set long enough we could do this. Um, I do have this tropical glitz. Um, it's called uh, Chameleon. And it's got the same flake that is in this ribbon, which is going to look pretty good. So we're going to do some flake in the pink on the handles and what we'll have in that case is it'll be pink white for the real seat with the silver trim and then we'll have this out in front and then i'll do some marbling probably in a split and then we'll go with a silver labels so it's going to be pink white and silver the whole thing and then we have the chrome uh guides which and i'll use some pink um, over the wraps on the guides and it'll have it'll be pink white silver So I think it's gonna look good. So now um, Next step in this build is to get some epoxy on these I don't like personally the texture of This without some epoxy on it. It's probably fine for most people But it's, since it's a white one and I don't want it to get dirty over time I want to at least coat it with clear and since we're doing something some epoxy on it. I'm gonna put some tinting in it and a little bit of the the flake, mm -hmm. and it'll kind of match up. <clears throat> okay. So let's mix up about four cc's of each okay. of epoxy, and that should give us enough. I'll grab a brush, a little pink brush. Why not? Ain't you getting PSD? I also had, I bought these for a rod I did years ago. I haven't figured out exactly, I mean, the ribbon, the stickers are obviously way too large. But, I haven't figured out what to do with these. If I could get them on the rod somehow. So if you got, if you guys, these are the little elastic wristbands. Um, if you guys have any idea about how to get, I thought about cutting them and laying them on like grip tape, but I don't know how that would look. I never did actually try it. But it is, uh, I've got another white one. So you guys put down in the comments what you think would be a good idea for this if you have one. <coughs> we also have the, uh, the sticky stuff, the sticky labels. Anyway, I'm gonna probably wind up doing a bunch of them. The FDX Custom Rods is business of the month for November at South State Bank in Auburndale, Florida. So Nathan and I are trying to scramble here to get a bunch of these rods. Some of these are just stock rods that we're building. This is, this one is a stock rod. I am building another one. I, this is kind of like my practice rod. I am building one as a custom rod on an order. Um, so you got, we're, we're ready to go. Yep, we're ready to go. All right, so we're gonna put the black in first. And I did, I think I kind of figured out why I get less bubbles by putting the black first. And that's because, I keep dropping crap. It's because the, the viscosity, it's a lot thinner, the hardener is than the resin. And the resin goes into the hardener and the hardener kind of wraps around it. But if you go the other way, the hardener kind of the hardener kind of splashes into the resin, and that's when you get the bubbles. Although we're putting a, a pigment in it, so it really doesn't matter. 
because we're going to wind up knocking the bubbles out anyway, and we're going to use some heat to get us thin to run it where we're at, 3341. We're going to mix this about two minutes, so where are we at? So we got other rods going on. What we got? We got the um, the yak flipping stick, although after talking to Murphy uh, one day last week, <clears throat> It's not really going to be a yak stick as much as it's, he's building it as a legacy rod. He wants it to be a rod that he can pass down from generation to generation. And, you know, we're still finalizing the design. We'll get started on it next week, but it's on a, an 8351 NFC, which is the 7.6 heavy moderate or medium heavy moderate flipping stick which is what I build a lot of my like big swim bait rods on the big the big boy is that same blank where you can throw the ounce and a half uh, wake bait <clears throat> and a big swim baits on it without it you know killing your arm because it loads very differently and I also build flipping sticks out of that with that blank because you don't need the broom handle bone jarring hook set when you've only got 10 feet of braid out because you wind up ripping a hole in a fish's mouth and you lose a fish. <clears throat> so he saw, he understood that. I, I sent it, the specs to him. He sent me some colors. Um, I think we're gonna wind up being like purple and silver. Ooh. I got some ideas about marbling for that. Um, so we'll get into that next week. So you can see that video in probably a few weeks. So we're about two minutes in. I'm going to add the pigment now, <clears throat> and I'm going to add it just, I don't know, I, I want it to show in the white area, but I don't want it to cover the black. Basically, I want to dye the white parts of this grid pink, which I think, if I get the right consistency, it'll, it'll look great. <clears throat> I did these other two here. You might be able to see those on camera with a silver. And I've done a couple. I've done. I got a dark purple and a green over black. Back in the back there. I'll show you those before. Ooh, that looks good. <laughs> this is, I bought this stuff. Um, just shopping online and just <clears throat> trying to find something that was going to work to make these colors match. So this is the first time I've used some of this stuff. As and far that as matches almost identical from this angle right here. You see, that's I don't might have... be a little a shade darker what you have than yeah, what this I don't is. Yeah, so. um, I think I'm gonna need some more glitter. I don't have quite enough flake. Give me another shovel full in there. Now this Justice, um, they like abalone pieces. Um, I will use that in some clear, as some accent somewhere else, or I'll put it over top somewhere. Okay. Now we're in wrap mode. Got to take the shoe off. Okay, take my right shoe off. I'm like shoeless FDX, like shoeless Joe Jackson. you were done with your tool, you can pass that tool down to me, and I can clean it You off. can. Put it in wrap mode, click. All right, I'm gonna slide down where everybody can see this a little better, maybe. Okay, now I'm just gonna dump it on here. I'm gonna I'm gonna transfer this epoxy down this grip or down a blank to get a really nice even coat. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. It's, it's angle of your brush is ooh, and I just scraped it and I got it all over my hands. I'll take that. Don't get it in the thumb. Nope, I didn't get any of my thumb this time. I just can't get rid of the sparkle in my hands now. 
So what I want to do is I'm going to dump it on here. And it, what I'm saying is angle of your brush. So if I hold it down here, it's going to peel it off and drip. If I hold it up high, it's going to pile up in front of the brush, but it's going to stay on. And I just want to make sure I'm soaking these threads in. And if you angle the brush, you can push it one way or the other. That's pretty much the thickness that I want on it. Now, one thing I've been playing with, guys, and it's on, that green one looks really good, but you get your speed right, you got the right amount of epoxy on, and it's gonna be a wipe and a wipe, and then come off, and then you leave it alone. You see how those swirls are like X's in that green? Mm -hmm. Here's how you get that. So it's just gonna be, And then as it marbles, you get those extra show. Now it's not quite as dominant as it is on the green and black. But we'll try it again once the epoxy. Epoxy's still a little thin to pull that off. So let's go ahead and get this one, other one coated. Again, the epoxy is all about timing. If you're trying to manipulate epoxy and get, you know, some kind of interesting effect, typically it has to do with timing. And you get the epoxy to start its initial set, and you get the right amount of consistency out of your epoxy, and then you can pull off some special effects with it. Now right now I'm just carrying it, getting a nice even coat all the way across. So I'm going to carry it. So now you kind of got a swirl. That looks pretty good. I'm it does look pretty good, right? So I'm going to carry it back and just even it out. And then I'll try that again with just a swirl. Again, it's timing. looks really good actually. I like that swirl versus that X. Yeah, the X looks good over there on the green, but I think you're right about the swirl on the pink. So I'm getting the right amount of epoxy on the grip here. I get the speed of my wrapper consistent. I don't know about y'all, but I like it. So here's where having it in your power wrapper comes in handy. Because if you if you stop it for too long, you're gonna get runs and drips, and then when it starts leveling out leveling out again, you're gonna lose some of that detail. So you gotta be quick. So I'm gonna keep it rolling. Ta-da! Ta-da! Alright, so that gets us about halfway through this build. Next video, we're going to do real seat, wrapping, hook keeper, labels, and some more epoxy. So, thanks for watching, guys. We will see you next time. We'll see you next time.